Looks like Josiah was a ham radio operator. Hello? Flute? Are you there? This is Flute, but you sure don't sound like Puck, so explain yourself. Uh, my name's Nancy Drew. So where's Puck? Well, I'm pretty sure Puck's real name was Josiah Crowley, and I hate to say it, but he passed away earlier this year. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Heck, I never got to give him his sentence. His sentence? Well, see, a while back, Puck dictated a sentence to me, and told me that if and when he recited a certain passage from Shakespeare, I was to respond with that sentence. Weird fellow, that Puck. Could you tell me the sentence? Oh, no. Puck made me promise. I can only say the sentence after I hear the passage from Shakespeare. Is the passage from one of his plays? Don, if I know. What if I figured out the passage? Would you tell me the sentence then? Uh, I suppose I could do that, yes. Did you know Puck very well? I felt like I did. Met him over the radio a couple of years ago. <laughs> what a character. What'd you say his real name was? Josiah Crowley. Strange. I never heard of him. Why is that strange? Uh, he led me to believe he was this big cheese out in Hollywood, you know, some famous producer, director or something. Said he owned his own studio. He didn't own a studio, and he certainly didn't live in Hollywood. I'll be darned. So he was just lying to me. Well, ah, that's all right. I may have told him a fib or three over the years myself. Like the time I told him I was a scratch golfer. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. In any case, you tell me the passage, I'll tell you the sentence. Until then, over and out. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? I'm Thisbe, but only Puck calls me that. Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm afraid I have some bad news about Puck. <gasps> oh, dear. They closed the play he was starring in, didn't they? That's why I haven't heard from him. He's too far down in the dumps. Oh, I was afraid it was something like that. Actually, you haven't heard from him because he passed away several months ago. Oh, my. That's worse, isn't it? And after all that rigmarole he went through, making sure I knew my line and understood my cue? So he gave you a line to say and told you to repeat it only after you heard your cue, which was a passage from Shakespeare. Why, that's exactly what he did. He did the same thing with you, didn't he? How he enjoyed spreading his love of acting. He called himself the Johnny Appleseed of theater. Yes, well, could you tell me the line he gave you to say? I'd be delighted to. Uh, Thisbe, are you there? I'm waiting for my cue. But I don't know what that is. Puck was adamant that I not say my line unless and until I hear my cue. Sorry. Thisbe's not your real name, is it? No, it's what Puck called me. My real name is dull as dishwater, just like my life. Mildred. <sighs> Puck was such a breath of fresh air. His real name was... Uh, uh, I don't want to know. He told me that acting was his life and that he'd gotten rich and famous doing it. No matter who he was to the rest of the world, that's what he was to me and that's how I want to remember him. When I think I know what your cue from Shakespeare is, I'll contact you again, okay? Suit yourself. Over and out. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? This is Pyramus. Who are you? My name's Nancy Drew. Does somebody named Puck usually call you on this frequency? Somebody named Puck used to. Apparently he found something better to do. Haven't talked to him in months. Well, that's because he passed away not too long ago. Oh. Well, that's a good excuse, I guess. 
How'd you know he called me Pyramus? I'm a friend of a friend of his. I found your name and radio frequency in his journal. So why are you talking to me? I was just wondering, did Josiah, I mean Puck, ever ask you to tell him something in response to a certain passage from Shakespeare? Yeah, whenever he rattled off this stupid Shakespeare quote, I was supposed to rattle off this stupid saying he had me write down. How did you know about that? Because he had other people do that, too. Just out of curiosity, what was the stupid saying you were supposed to rattle off? Can't tell you. Gotta hear the Shakespeare first. Puck made me promise. How long have you known Puck? I've been talking to him over the radio for a couple of years. He told me he was just this lonely old rich guy who lived by himself and had a bunch of weird hobbies. <laughs> In a pig's eye. You didn't believe him? Rich guys don't own ham radio sets. They own radio stations. In their spare time, they drive fast cars and sail around the world and hobnob with other rich guys. They don't shoot the breeze with working stiffs like me. But... Look, if it made the guy happy to tell me he was rich, fine. No skin off my nose. But he didn't fool me. No siree. Not for a second. Anyways, the missus is calling, which means I gotta skedaddle. Over and out. Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Now what? Could I see that copy of A Midsummer Night's Dream you have there? Why? Well, you said it was Josiah's favorite play. I'd just like to take a look at it. It's a very old copy. I'd rather it not be handled unnecessarily, lest it fall completely apart. I'm sorry, Miss Drew, but request denied. It was nice talking to you. The feeling is... Almost mutual. Guess I better not leave the lights on. I don't hear anybody. Now would be a good time for me to sneak inside and have a quick look at that Shakespeare book. Yori, be quiet. You're disturbing us. Clear your mind of all thoughts. Think about nothing save that. Josiah must have circled these quotes, but why? Something tells me I better write down all the stuff that's circled here in my journal. Mr. Topham? Yes, Mrs. Deckman? Is it okay if I blink? Yes, it's okay if you blink. Just keep focusing. Your eyes, your thoughts, focus. Should I concentrate on the top edge or the bottom edge? Either one, Mrs. Deckman. Just concentrate. Mr. Duffin? Yes, Mrs. Deckman? Am I trying to push it? Or... I guess I better not leave the lights on.
Hello? Flute? Are you there? Flute here. That you, Nancy Drew? Yes, it's me. And I think I know the Shakespeare passage that Puck wanted you to listen for. Let's hear it. Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. That's it. Here, let me check my logbook for the response. Uh, now I'm supposed to say, Leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about. Leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about? Those were Puck's exact words. Well, hope I've been of some help. Over and out. Thisby, are you there? Hello? This is Thisby. Are you the young lady I talked to before? Yes, I'm pretty sure I know the cue now. I'm listening. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. <clears throat> the authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way. The authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way? That's what I was to say, although my delivery was much better when Puck was coaching me. And now, as Puck was fond of saying, I bid you adieu. Over and out. Pyramus, can you hear me? Hello? This is Pyramus. Is this whoever it was before? Yes, Nancy Drew. And I think I know the Shakespeare quote Puck used to rattle off when he wanted you to say that stupid saying. Think so? Well, let's hear it. Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. How'd you know? Long story. What did he tell you to say in response? Wait a minute. I had to write it down. Here. You're gonna love this. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. I told you it was stupid. I really appreciate your help. Just out of curiosity, what kind of car did Puck drive, do you know? I don't think he had a car. And he tried to tell me he was rich. Over and out. Flute is a character in A Midsummer Night's Dream.
A golf ball, no doubt meant to be used on that golf course of Josiah's. Another safe deposit box key? Emily, please, just sit me down. It's all right. It's not all right. Stop lying. Something's wrong with me. You've got to go talk to Emily. She's in a bad way. What do you mean? What's happened? Please, go talk to her. She won't listen to me. I'm no help at all. Just go back to River Heights, Nancy. Why? What's the matter? I took a nap after I got back from running errands, and when I woke up, this was in my hand. It's one of the necklaces that I thought had been stolen. I have no idea how it got there. I must do things and not remember. All this responsibility on top of losing mom. I can't cope with it. I'm having a, what Jean call it, a nervous breakdown. No, you're not. I don't want to talk anymore. Go home. You're just making things worse. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please. That'll be 25 cents. Here you go. Drive zippily. Hello again. I found another safe deposit box key that belonged to Josiah. Impossible. Josiah only had one box, and you've already opened it. But this has to be Josiah's key. It is one of ours. Where did you get it? I won it playing golf at Josiah's with a special ball. I had to ace one of the holes. Why does that sound familiar? I know why. That's what Clara always called me, her ace in the hole. That's who this key belongs to, Clara Pickford. So, Clara Pickford was really Josiah Crowley in disguise. Apparently, he loved playing tricks like that on people and hiding things right under their noses. I wonder what this is. Gloria Dowd, now Crandall, and Jane Willoughby, circa 1912. Jane Willoughby? That doesn't look the least bit like Jane Willoughby. No, it certainly doesn't. I'd better get back to the Lilac Inn and have a talk with her right now. Move out! 
out of the way, would you please? I'm kind of in a hurry. You're not going anywhere until you tell me who you really are. What are you talking about? I just saw a picture of Jane Willoughby. The real Jane Willoughby. It's been swell knowing you, sister. I can't let Jane out of my sight. That she's heading for the state line. I know. I'll take a shortcut and head her off. Why couldn't you just mind your own business? Dear Ned, I know you'll be home from school in a couple of days, but I couldn't wait to tell you. I just solved a mystery. I figured out that Emily Crandall's guardian was really an imposter named Marion, who intercepted the letter Emily wrote to Jane Willoughby after her mom died. She pretended to be Jane not only so she could steal Emily's valuables, but so she could convince Emily that she was incapable of running Lilac Inn and that she should sell it and split the money with her. On top of all that, I found Josiah Crowley's real will. In it, he left Emily so much money that she'll be able to hire all the people she needs to keep the inn going. He left Jim Archer a ton of money, too, which means he won't have to close his bank. And from now on, he'll be able to buy his wife a new dress anytime he wants. As for Richard Topham, Josiah left him nothing. Although Topham still refuses to admit that he forged the first will and insists that he's going to contest the will I found, Dad says it's highly doubtful he'll succeed and that he'd be better off sticking to spoon tricks. Anyway, when you get home, I'll give you all the details over a nice big piece of slightly damaged cherry pie. Wait till you hear that part of the story. As always, Nancy. Great news, I think. See, Frank and Joe Hardy have invited me to help them solve a mystery. Only this mystery takes place on a train, but not just any train, a train that was found abandoned years ago in the middle of nowhere. All of its passengers had simply vanished. Some people say the train is jinxed, others say it's haunted. I mean, it'll be fun to finally get to work alongside the Hardy Boys, but I just hope the trip we're going on doesn't turn out to be, you know, one way.